Hello, and welcome to Lodestar's Lending Leaders. I'm Jim Paolino, founder and CEO of Lodestar Software Solutions. On this podcast, I'm going to be talking to leaders in the mortgage and real estate industries. Our goal is to talk about current events, interesting things from their end of the industry, and anything else that we feel is fascinating. For this episode, we have a very special guest who I will get to in just a minute. Um, what I want to do now is introduce a segment that we're going to be running probably once a month every so often on this podcast called America's Next Top Home Buyer. One of the things that I love about this industry is how we are involved in the largest financial transaction of most people's lives. And I think that oftentimes the mortgage industry, the real estate industry, the title industry loses sight of that because we get so tied up in our day to day, whether it be talking about technology, talking about sales amongst ourselves, talking about networking, talking about conferences, um, that we forget about the consumer who are, we are ultimately there to help. Um, so one of the things I really want to do is every so often bring on an actual consumer or prospective home buyer. Um, and kind of see where they are at and what the normal person on the street um, consumer knows about the industry. So today's first guest for this is going to be very special, my wife, Sarah Quinn. Hi. (laughs) Sarah, uh, you are, like myself, in your early 30s, which makes us older millennials. Um, Neither of us have owned a home quite yet. Um, and you work in education um, in the college admissions process, as well um, as having a master's degree from Columbia's Teachers College. So just so everyone knows, Sarah is very smart. And even though some of these home buyer questions may be questions that the average person doesn't know, um, the point of this is to really kind of reflect what people generally know or don't know about the industry. So you, our listeners, when you're going out and talking to people, kind of understand that and can understand how us as, as an industry can do a better job. So, Sarah, are you ready to dive in? Oh, so ready to dive in. <laughs> Great. So question number one, do you want to buy a home? Yeah, uh, I, I want to buy a home. Um, I think it's something that I haven't thought a whole lot about until we moved to the Philadelphia area and it was more, seemed more attainable in terms of money. Mm-hmm. Um, but yes, I want to buy a home. And that actually gets to my other question too, of prior to that, why do you think you may have not thought about it or wanted to before this point? I think that I didn't think about it much before this point because it felt unattainable in terms of how much homes cost when we lived in New York City. Um, That didn't feel attainable in any way, shape or form for a normal person to buy Mm -hmm. even an apartment in in New York. Um, Mm -hmm. Prior to that, you know, as a young person in my early 20s, mid 20s, it didn't feel like something that you needed to do when you were that age. I think as we've gotten a little older now, we're in our mid thirties, early thirties. I don't know. I said early thirties, but you know. (laughs) It seems like something that when you get to a certain point in your life, if you're from a background where your family owned a home, it's an expectation almost. And it's a, it's a marker of success. Mm -hmm. It's something that you do at a certain age. If you're, you know, from a background where you're privileged enough to have a family who owned a home and that model was set up for you. Mm -hmm. So I think it becomes a marker of success and a marker of an age. It's like, Mm -hmm. okay, now I'm a certain age. Mm -hmm. I'm married. Maybe I want to have a family. The American dream tells me that at this point in my life Mm -hmm. and where I am, I should be thinking about buying a home. So it's something you've pretty much considered or know that was in the, in the cards, but just slowly but surely work towards. Yeah, I think part of it is because my parents were privileged enough to be able to buy homes. And so I've always lived in a home that my parents owned. Um, And then you just see it out there in the world in movie Mm -hmm. and TV and and things they show you that Mm -hmm. this is what you should be doing at a certain point in your life. Like, Mm -hmm. okay, you finished college, maybe you got married. Yeah, why aren't you buying a house? Of course you're out there. The white picket fence, right? The two Mm -hmm. and a half kids, the whole deal, yeah. Uh, do you think buying a home is a good investment? I mean, I guess so. Everyone says that it is. I mean, 
again, that's been modeled to me as behavior that mm -hmm. yes, you buy a home because it's a good investment. If you were to ask me why it's a good investment, I don't totally know if I could tell you. I mean, you hear that homes appreciate, I believe mm -hmm. I would say in value when you fix things up and, you know, neighborhoods change and things are different. So something that you mm -hmm. bought a couple of years ago might be worth more, but then you also hear about the housing market falling apart. So I've been told that buying a home is a good investment. Um, but if you ask me for facts about why that's the case, I wouldn't be able to tell you why. Mm -hmm. Well, speaking of, um, and I know I've shared some of these questions with you, but we're going to kind of jump around to keep you on your toes here. Okay. You talked about uh, the real estate industry, housing industry falling apart, right? That happened during our lifetimes. We were finishing up college, moving into the workplace right around the Great Recession. So at what what was your understanding of the housing industry at that time? And what is your understanding of kind of what happened then? Uh, my understanding of what was going on in the housing industry at that time was probably very small because mm -hmm. I was, it was 2008, 2009, I was a senior in college. So it, my understanding was more about the economy, whatever that meant mm -hmm. also, like, what does that mean? Yeah. But it was, no one's going to get a job. You're not going to have a place to work. No one's hiring. Um, Obama had been elected. So there was all this talk of like, oh, he's going to save the economy and do these things. But it was less about the housing market. And it was more mm -hmm. about the general economy. What I know now that I think happened. Mm -hmm. Again, I don't know. I think that a lot of people who didn't actually have good financial backgrounds were given a lot of money um, mm -hmm. to buy a home. So maybe somebody who in a normal world would have gotten $250,000 to, to buy a house, was given a $500,000 loan. And then mm -hmm. all of a sudden they, in reality, couldn't pay it back. And they asked for their money yeah. back from the bank. I don't actually know, but I know that the housing market fell yeah. apart and then everybody lost their homes and it was terrible. Right. Uh, it was more like the bank asked for their house back. Okay. <laughs> no. a, little, a little bit different than that, but that, that is the correct understanding or a good synopsis of, of what happened. So when you do get to the point where you're ready to buy a home, we're ready to buy a home, um, how do you imagine the process going? What would be your first step? Uh, my first step, if I didn't have you um, downstairs to ask about what we should do is I, in my case, again, I would ask my parents, but again, that's mm -hmm. a, a privileged position to come from because my parents have mm -hmm. gone through the, buy the buying process. Um, also, it was 21 years ago was the last time they bought a house. So I'm sure it's different now. Um, mm -hmm. And because I'm a millennial, I would Google it. I would Google, what do I want to do when I buy a home? Um, what's my first step? And, mm -hmm. you know, God knows where Google would take me. Um, but honestly, if I didn't have you and I didn't have parents who could potentially help me with the process, I would Google it. Mm -hmm. But would you Google with the intent in reading an article and doing it? Or would you kind of Google with the intent of finding someone you could work with? Oh, um, I would Google with the intent of reading an article about what I should do. Okay. Got it. Um, and what about the process are you most afraid of or nervous about? I mean, to me, the mortgage industry feels like buying a car. Mm -hmm. um, you don't know what you don't know. And who out there is going to be a neutral source who's actually there for mm -hmm. the consumer to help get a good deal or understand the process. Um, mm -hmm. It's hard to believe, it's hard for me to believe that there are companies who are in the home buying process who are out on my side and who are trying to help mm -hmm. me get the best deal and who are trying to help educate me and who are trying to help me understand what's going on. It feels like, mm -hmm. you know, it's a bunch of bankers mm -hmm. in suits who are setting interest rates and prices and realtors who want to make a commission. It doesn't mm -hmm. feel like it's consumer friendly. It feels like I'm a pawn a little bit in the game. Mm -hmm. I'm just one of many cogs in the wheel and I don't really I'm not on the totem, like, right. I don't really matter. Like they're trying to make money. Like people mm -hmm. are trying to make a commission. People mm -hmm. are trying to make money. So kind of like the used car salesman type analogy of it to go back to cars. Yeah, absolutely. It's mm -hmm. like, you know, they're going to tell you what you want to hear, mm -hmm. but what's, you know, how do I know that what they're saying is right? And if I go to the used car dealership next door, are they going to tell me something totally different? And then how do I know what's right? Mm -hmm. um, it feels like a faceless industry to me. Like who is the friendly face of the mortgage industry 
Like there doesn't seem mm-hmm. to be somebody out there that you can be like, oh, I trust them. I think they're the ones who are yeah. going to tell me the right information that I need to know. Mm-hmm. Well, Rocket Mortgage, right? That was one thing we were talking about before. Friendly face of the industry. I mean, I guess. Rocket Mortgage. I don't know what, I mean, I, I assume Rocket Mortgage is where you go and you, you like see how much money you would get, right? I have no idea who owns Rocket Mortgage. It could be the government. It could be Tom Brady. It could be the guy down the street. I generally, genuinely yeah. have no idea who owns Rocket We were Rocket talking Mortgage. about this before, but I didn't tell you the answer yet. It's you didn't? Owned, I mean, is it a yeah. bank? I don't know. It's owned by Quicken, which is one of the largest non-bank lenders in the country. So it's pretty much a very large mortgage company. And Rocket Mortgage is like their app for consumers. Right. So that to me feels not super consumer friendly, right? Because they're owning, they own it and they're pushing what they want out into the world. I think the important thing about this conversation too is right or wrong aside, it's about the perception. And in this case, the perception is your reality. And that's really what I want people to get from this conversation is this is how these things in the industry um, are are perceived. So you'd mentioned before going in, Googling, how to buy a house, something like that. What do you think you would do after that? What do you think the steps in the process are? I mean, knowing a little bit of what I know, I, I, I think the first thing that I would do would be to get, to go to a bank and see how much of a, like what kind of mm-hmm. loan I could get. Um, mm-hmm. So again, what would I do? I don't know. I guess I'd roll up to the Bank of America and be like, hey, can I talk to somebody about getting a loan? Mm-hmm. And what would the difference be between going to say Bank of America versus a mortgage company or a credit union? I have absolutely no idea. Mm-hmm. What about a mortgage broker? I don't think I know what a mortgage broker is. Okay. <laughs> Sounds good. Um, no, that's that's perfect. So we had talked a little bit before about the idea. You basically said you would get a, pre-fo- a pre-qualification, right, of what loan you qualify for. How do you think that's determined? I, I assume it's your credit score, um, mm-hmm. that they run a credit report on you. Um, and from eavesdropping on conversations with people in the mortgage industry, I think that there's something about debt to income ratio of how much money you owe versus how much money you have coming in. But that mm-hmm. actually brings up a question I have in my mind, like, what if you don't have a credit score? Or what right. if you don't have credit history? Um, so I don't know. Mm-hmm. Um, for you to get what's called a qualified mortgage, you would need a credit score. I believe it's at least 650. Mm. Um, so the credit score is very important. And then you are right that debt, cut, debt to income ratio too is it's making sure that you're able to afford a certain amount. Typically, I think it's what 38% of um, all of your debt or your debt should not be more than 38% of your income. Mm-hmm. So um, speaking of mortgage terms, um, do you know what PMI is? I do know what PMI is. Uh, Mm -hmm. I don't know what the P is. I'm assuming the M is mortgage insurance. Mm -hmm. Um, I believe it's when you put less than 20% down when you Mm -hmm. buy a house. And because you've put down less than 20%, there's an assumption that you may not be able to pay your mortgage. So they tack on a fee that's Mm -hmm. more money. So it's, I have no idea how much it would be. It it could be $20. It could be $200 a month. I genuinely don't know, Mm -hmm. but they put more on so that I guess if you default on it later, they can have more money from you already. I don't know if that's necessarily, I think they're ensuring the increased risk that someone who puts down less would default. It's the basic, the basic idea there. So Uh, what about title insurance? Oh, I should probably know this one. I still think the title insurance is making sure that the person who's selling the property actually owns the property. Mm -hmm. Maybe. Um, That's like a big one half of title insurance. So yes, then I do not know what the yeah I do not know what the other side of the other half of it is. Making sure that you can borrow against the property, so you can borrow borrow money against the ownership of the property because you're the only one who owns it. I got to stop answering all of these questions so we can keep on moving. What about Freddie Mac and Fannie Mae? Who are they and what do they do? That's the question of the hour, isn't it? Um, (laughs) It's a little embarrassing. I think that I don't know the answer to that question. Mm -hmm. I think that they are lenders who give you money, but I also know that I think that that is very incorrect. I do not actually think that they give you money. Um, Mm -hmm. I assume that they're associated with the government. I don't actually know the answer. Mm-hmm. Did I read Obama's book? 
Yes. Did I skip parts about the mortgage <laughs> crisis because I didn't understand it? Also, yes. So if I had read that more closely, would I know the answer to this question? Yes. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Just being honest. <laughs> Still laughing a little bit. I like it. That's perfect. Um, so you touched on this a little bit before, but what do you think of the housing real estate industry at large and kind of the businesses that fall into it? Like the specific businesses, what would I say like makes up the mortgage industry or the housing industry? I guess like, what would you think about them? You talked a little bit about kind of like the used car salesman yeah. vibe that you may have of a loan officer or realtor right. or a mortgage broker. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, I think it's a little bit, a little salesy, like you know, they're trying to get you to buy something. And mm -hmm. inherently for me, when someone's trying to get you to buy something, you know, they, they have an agenda, you know, rightly mm -hmm. or wrongly, you know, I would assume that again, their agenda is kind of looking out for them. Mm -hmm. um, I, it feels faceless to me. Like I said before, like, who mm -hmm. are these people? What's their background? Where do they come from? Why do they get into this industry? Um, I mean, I come from an, an emissions industry that there's like, like you said, a lot of perception versus reality. So I certainly understand like, and when I think mm -hmm. of mortgage brokers and lenders and bankers, like I definitely think of middle-aged to older white men. And so mm -hmm. as a younger woman, you know, I definitely wish that I, if I saw those folks, if I saw mortgage and bank professionals, mm -hmm. I would love to see more women, younger people, people of color, more diversity in the industry because right. as a, a woman I personally am more likely to talk to and trust a woman right. and so I have no idea you know the perception of somebody who's a person of color but I might imagine that they might feel more comfortable feeling mm -hmm. represented with somebody who they're handing a lot of money over to and a lot of vulnerability so to mm -hmm. me the mortgage banking industry is old white dudes mm -hmm. and for somebody who's like not super impressed with a lot of old white dudes in the world right now like I would love to see some not old white dudes when I'm handing them however yeah. much money I might be handing them. Well, I think that makes sense. You know, bring up an excellent point of home buyers kind of wanting to see themselves and the people that they're working with. Mm -hmm. um, so I think that that's really um, a really good point to keep Well, in and mind. I think there's a trust mm -hmm. issue here. Like you said in the beginning, this is such a big financial moment for people. You've maybe, you know, a lot of people save for a really long time to buy a house mm -hmm. or to be able to afford it. It's very vulnerable. Like I'm buying yeah. a home. That's a big deal for some folks. It's they're the first person in their family to buy a home. And that's a big mm -hmm. jump in terms of, again, the American dream. And you want to feel taken care of. You want to feel yeah. trusted. You want to feel understood. And so for some, you know, again, not to hate on old white guys, but a little bit of like an older white guy who who's owned a home, whose parents have owned a home forever. And then you have a younger person of color who maybe this is their first time buying. Like, are they going to connect with that person? Are they going to feel right. like that person understands their mm -hmm. concerns and vulnerabilities? I don't know if I would feel like, yeah. you know, that with somebody. So I just think representation and, and background and mm -hmm. you know, makes a difference, makes well, think, people feel yeah. safer. And when it's such a big financial mm -hmm. commitment, you want to feel safe. I think you talk, and we talk a lot about the relationship aspect of this business. And I think you touched on it quite beautifully there um, in terms of how vulnerable people are going through this. You're sharing your bank account information, your credit score, your social yeah. security number. And I think for people who are processing dozens of these a day, mm -hmm. um, it's, it's tough for that not to get lost. Um, mm -hmm. So I think that is a really good point. Mm -hmm. um, and one thing, this is kind of our, our final line of questions here. Um, While well, you mentioned um, your parents buying a home, we have quite a few friends. You have quite a few friends who have bought homes, bought even their second home now, mm -hmm. depending on where in the country they live. Um, what is your perception or, or from talking to them, what have you kind of ascertained about the home buying process? That's really stressful. Mm. Uh, I think that's the number one thing people say. Like, I don't know a whole lot of people who are actually in the process, like beyond just being on Zillow and having fun, like who are like going and getting, going to the bank and getting a loan or then going out mm. and meeting with realtors. Like nobody I talk to is like, this is the most fun thing ever because it's stressful. Are we going to get the house? Are we going to have to mm -hmm. put down, you know, a lot of money? Are we going to go over asking? And then even when we maybe get an offer accepted, you have to do an, an inspection and all these things. And it falls through because the roof is rotting. It's like, I have not heard anybody talk about like, this is such a fulfilling and exciting experience. And I can't wait to do it again. It's like, oh my gosh, we just bought a house. It's finally over. It's been months. I'm never moving again. I'm never mm -hmm. going through this process again because it was stressful. Mm -hmm. And right now it feels like the right. market is so crappy that like nobody's mm -hmm. really trying to put themselves through this process right now right. because 
you go through all of that for a house that you might not even really want at the end mm-hmm. of the day. So, so you go to get a home, um, your offer gets accepted, you sign the paperwork, you begin the process. How long does it take until you close on that home and have the keys in your hand? Well, based on the amounts of house hunters I've watched, I would say that at least the minimum, I would, I would guess the minimum is a couple of months. You don't really see people being like, we bought our, we signed the paperwork. And then they're like three months later and they go back to their house. It's, you know, three months. So I would say that feels like a minimum. I mean, I've heard of folks who are in it for longer for whatever reason, but I would Mm -hmm. guess it's somewhere around three months. I think it will depend on the area and the point you're, where you're at. I think the average is somewhere between 45 and 60 days. Right. Um, but I think it's a lot longer right now. And, mm-hmm. um, so from last question, from talking to people and, and your understanding about the home buying process, what about it should be easier than it currently is? Oh my gosh. It kind of feels like everything. I mean, I would I would say the thing that feels easy is just like hopping on Zillow when like Redfin and looking yeah. for homes. Like that seems easy to me. Like I do it all the time. Um, I think... I, I, it's not necessarily a, a solid answer, but I think just like transparency in the process of like mm-hmm. understanding more about like the background of the process and how those things happen. Um, it does feel like it takes a long time. Mm-hmm. It feels like it takes a really long time. And I, I can imagine why, when you have that amount of money kind of moving back and forth. Um, that's a good question. Honestly, mm-hmm. from the folks I've talked to who've bought and gone through, I think they would say basically everything should feel easier. Mm-hmm. <laughs> um but I know that's not a super great answer, but no. again, I, I've not heard somebody say like, wow, that was such a fun and amazing process. I would love mm-hmm. to do it again soon. Mm-hmm. Oh, I think, um, I think that's great. I mean, this is, I think, really interesting feedback about just the perception and you're someone who is adjacent to the industry right. um, from having family members working in it or in-laws working in it or people that you know. Mm-hmm. Um, is there anything you want to add? This is usually where I ask someone to plug something or where, where people can find you or anything like that, but anything that we did not touch upon um, or that you thought of or, or anything of that nature? No, I mean, I don't want it to sound as though I think the whole industry is negative and that people yeah. aren't out, you know, that people aren't out for mm-hmm. the good of the consumer or anything like right. that. But I think you know, when you, when you start talking about money and you start tying banks into things, like, I think people get a little bit like scared because it is such a big deal. So I don't want it to sound like, I think the whole industry is negative and full of bad people who aren't, you know, trying to make things better, but it's a, it's a daunting process. Mm -hmm. And as somebody, again, who works in an industry where I, it's daunting for the folks who I work with, right? Like Mm -hmm. the families who come to me and say like, Oh, talk to us about college. And I'm like, Oh, come on guys. It's not that bad. I do it every day, all day. So it's not bad for me. But it is, it's the first time for these folks. So I think Mm -hmm. that's the point is that you process these things all day long, but this is the first time I'm buying a house and I have no idea what I'm doing. Mm -hmm. So just remembering to keep the fresh perspective of this person's coming in brand new, nervous, vulnerable, you know, that kind of thing. No, it makes sense. I never really thought that much about the similarities of someone applying for college versus mm-hmm. going for the housing process, but I like that a lot. Yeah, there's so much mm-hmm. noise out there in both. Yeah. Like there's so much noise about the college process. There's so mm-hmm. much noise about the industry, the mortgage industry and mm-hmm. Wall Street and banks and all these things. It's like, where is the yeah. truth? Like, where's the, the true center? Where's the right. fact? So people can get caught up yeah. in the noise and that's where the, the fear comes from. Mm-hmm. So, and you have your sense. bias or idea of yeah. the perfect college, the perfect home yeah. of what you're going to get and you know, reality isn't, isn't always the same, but yeah, hopefully it, it mostly works out. Right. You want like the four bedroom with the brand new kitchen. Yeah. And it's like, they want that college. It's like, Hey guys, you're going to get the two bedroom yeah. with the old kitchen. Well, you know how I feel about a gas stove top versus electric. So that's legitimate yeah. to me. And I also yeah. like, can you use all of our cookware on an electric stove top or is it going to no. break? The, like yeah. there are, that's a legitimate question. Yeah. So. so anyways, um, this was really fun. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you're ready for all of the mortgage executives to reach out to you after Great. this and you know just be the face of the first time home buyer that's right so you can find me on linkedin that. in fact <laughs> well they can find me so that's going to be the easiest part well thank you so much sarah this was a absolutely. lot of fun uh hope to have you on the podcast again absolutely All right. thanks for listening to load stars lending leaders please like and subscribe wherever you get this podcast if you have any ideas for upcoming episodes or would like to be a guest please reach out to us at lendingleaders at lssoftwaresolutions.com. Hope to hear from you.